Hello and welcome back to Testable Faith. I'm Jeb Zwerink and once again we're joined with Dr. Eric Hedin and we're going to be talking about fine-tuning today. Eric, good to have you back here again. Thank you so much, Jeff. Again, it's a great pleasure to be with you. Very good. So, I, topic of fine-tuning gets a lot of discussion out there and I don't think it's really that controversial of a statement to say that the universe looks like it's fine-tuned, but there's a number of responses to it. So I'm just gonna I'll kind of throw the floor over to you. When you talk about fine tuning, one, what do you see as fine tuning and how do you respond? Well, let's start there. I'll ask other questions later. Well, certainly I think that the fine tuning of physical parameters really to allow life to exist. I mm -hmm. think that's the kind of fine tuning that we're interested in um, is like you mentioned, I believe it's not really controversial that it exists, meaning that uh, Physicists, uh, scientists from you know all backgrounds of belief or not belief would say yes. Uh, the parameters that allow for the conditions uh, for life are are really quite narrowly tuned among all possible conceivable parameter ranges. And so, I think the the real question is, uh, in terms of you know what's the significance of that. Mm -hmm. Is, is this just the way it has to be? You know, we, we really only have a sample size of one universe uh, as far as we can measure. You know, whether there's more universes in a multiverse, um, it might be an interesting question, but as far as what we actually have to uh, study, it's, it's just one. And the fact that this one universe shows up with parameters that allow us to exist as observers, some would say, well, this is really no big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, think of it logically. If the parameters of the universe were such that life couldn't exist, you know, it was either too hot or too cold or no stars or something, um, the chemistry was wrong, well, then we wouldn't be here and no one would be having a testable faith interview today. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the question, I believe, can be kind of more finely tuned than that mm -hmm. um, to ask, is it logically um, necessary that these conditions are to allow life? Or is there something beyond that, you know, to make the question more interesting? And Well, yeah, that's, that's interesting you say that because often what I've heard is, okay, yes, everything looks kind of fine-tuned, that we could imagine varying the parameters and you just get something that doesn't conduce or is not conducive to life. And as you said, our existence necessitates seeing conditions that are, the conditions for life have to be there, because as you said, if they weren't, yes. we're not gonna be here. How do, how do we go beyond that though? Is there a way to assess whether it's, we're just seeing the conditions we have to see because we're here, or might things be more finely tuned than they need to be for just life to exist? Yes, I think that, one of the clues that helps us in this discussion is looking at how narrowly uh, tuned the physical parameters are that allow life to exist. And for those- Just give us a couple of examples of those. So well, that we know what we're talking just, about. Um, you know, if you take uh, kind of parameters that apply cosmologically, you can, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the expansion rate of the universe, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the ratio of, uh, dark energy to uh, the rest of the components of the universe. Okay. That, um, so these are things that are kind of set once in the universe. There's no variability in them. It, it, it is what it is. If right. You will, so. Or or even physical constants like the speed of light. You mm -hmm. know, it's a certain value. But that one parameter has more implications than just how fast light moves through a vacuum. Okay. Um, you know, if you look at uh, the energy levels of an atom, they are in part determined by the value of the speed of light. Right. And so that affects chemistry and it affects molecular bonding and so that affects life. And so if you varied the speed of light, perhaps the necessary chemistry that allows life to exist would be thrown off. Mm -hmm. uh, the ratio of forces, you know, we've got only four forces of nature, um, but their strengths need to be within certain ranges to allow stars to shine and produce energy by um, fusion energy, mm -hmm. you know, accompanied by the gravitational contraction. And so there's a lot of 
fundamental forces and their relative strengths that come into play just to make a star shine. So th these are just a, a few examples. But again, to sort of look at the, I guess, the implications of the argument itself, you know, fine tuning, does it point to something beyond nature? Like, is it evidence for God or is it just the way it is and it couldn't be any different or else we wouldn't be here? Mm -hmm. Well, again, I th would say that, of course, it's logically necessary that the parameters need to be in a range that allows uh, life to exist. But from my perspective as a physicist, I would say that there is no reason why the parameters need to be so narrowly knife edge finely tuned as they in fact are in many cases where we see just the slightest variation, you know, one part in 10 to the 60th change or, mm -hmm. or one part in 10 to the 120th change for the dark energy ratio or, or even more finely tuned for initial conditions of say the distribution of matter at the beginning of the universe. But I think the, the philosophical question, if you might uh, put it in those terms, is why such knife edge, finely tuned parameters? Why, why isn't the parameter space that allows life rather broad and general mm. and uninteresting? It's, it's like if I were God and I wanted to leave a little bit of a signature in the universe that eventually humans might discover that could point uh, kind of a skeptical uh, civilization back to God. I, mm -hmm. I, I think that the, you know, putting razor sharp parameter uh, tuning in place is, is like a signpost. It uh, suggests that something more mm -hmm. is going on than just, well, we had to kind of get things basically right to allow life to exist. So, so if I get what you're saying, kind of naturally speaking, you might expect, yeah, there's this parameter and there's this range where clearly there's ranges where life can exist, but mm -hmm. you tend to get kind of broad distributions, Gaussian distributions, whatever, that have a, sure. a shape to them. Your contention is the fact that these distributions are incredibly tight is something beyond what we would expect naturally and it points to more than just, okay, this is just what we had to see. Yes, I, I think you said it very well. Um, okay. It does point to something more than we would expect. And so, you know, is this um, a conclusive evidence for, for God? And I, I would say, well, at least it's, it's consistent. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's unusual enough that it, it draws our attention to maybe thinking that there's more than just um, unguided natural processes at work in our universe. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that this is, for us, a, a signpost that uh, points us to a creator. It's, it's a reason to believe. So I want to follow up on, on that question, because I, I tend to agree with you. But I also know, you know, as physicists, where you run into numbers like one part in 10 to the 60, that tends to... As a physicist, I would say, okay, that means we're missing something here. Hmm. Um, what about, you know, is, it, is there something that the sharpness, instead of pointing to a creator, is just pointing to something where we don't understand what's going on in creation? How would you respond to that claim? I, I agree with it in the sense that um, I understand that uh, a lot of secular scientists feel like whenever there's some sort of uh, sharpness to the value of a parameter that's indicating fine-tuning that they would, like you said, they would uh, suspect that maybe we're not understanding, that there's maybe mm -hmm. some some natural explanation for why it's so sharply tuned. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's maybe some further searching that needs to go on. Um, but I think there's a couple of approaches we can take to actually, in a way, dismissing that as, um, you know, it's not really suggesting that if we just learn more, we're going to really do away with the fine-tuning argument and it's mm -hmm. going to all be natural. Because the trend is, over the last many decades, as scientists have studied more, we haven't been able to explain away fine-tuning. The degree of fine-tuning that has shown up has not become less as we've learned mm -hmm. more. It's actually become greater. 
So the more we study nature, the more finely tuned we find it to be mm -hmm. to allow life to exist. And so it's going the opposite way of what a naturalist might might hope, you know, to like, oh, if we just study more, we're going to realize that all these uh, what look to be curious uh, signposts are just resolved. No, the more we study, the more um, kind of the signpost becomes more noticeable and I think more dramatically points towards a creator. Well, that, that's very consistent with RTV's message. And I know one of the claims that I would agree with Hugh and he's made is that the more we learn, the more these signposts stand out. So I appreciate your comments and what you have to bring today. Sure. You know, we've had a good time talking with Eric Hedin here. I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and search for Eric Hedin. That's H-E-D-I-N. You'll get a lot of access to resources he's developed about fine tuning, his testimony, about other discussions and information, just lots of wealth of information that will equip you to go out and share the gospel with those around you.